Hey everyone, it's Great Zarin, and tomorrow night is the Royal Rumble 2021. Royal Rumble is maybe the best pay-per-view of the entire year. Money in the Bank's pretty close second. And I'm going to talk about it, make predictions, whatever it is. So, as of me making this and recording this, there are six matches officially announced and probably one or two more that could happen or could happen later on, could be free show, something like that. So we'll start at the bottom of this list that I have, which is Sasha Banks versus Carmella for the SmackDown Women's title. Um, Sasha Banks is probably going to retain. Uh, Carmella has not really done a whole lot since she lost her last title shot. Sasha beat up her sommelier, beat Carmella's sommelier, um, last week with him being surprisingly athletic, and that was a very entertaining, I guess, squash match technically, but entertaining regardless. But Sasha's retaining. Just, there's no momentum for Carmella, there's no reason for Carmella to have won it. And when I get to the female rumble, uh, Sasha Banks makes more sense to go into Mania as the champion anyway. Next up is the SmackDown, not SmackDown, the women's tag titles, Asuka and Charlotte Flair, the champions winning against Nia Jax and Shayna Baszler. Uh, I don't really know who would be better as champions. I feel like Asuka needs to not be a champion aside from Raw Women's Champion because it's a singles title and... There's no real women's tag division anymore, or at least on Raw and SmackDown. If they were going to NXT all the time, they'd be a different story. And I definitely will see when the women's Dusty Cup is done, them getting a shot at the, whoever the women's tag champions are, which would probably be better for it to be Nia Jax and Shayna Baszler. Asuka and Charlotte, I mean, this is Asuka's at least second reign with the tag titles, which is good for her. She deserves all the accolades. And as to Charlotte's crown, now Charlotte just needs, I think it's the women's money in the bank to have won everything. But just... Asuka and Charlotte aren't doing a lot. You almost forget that they're the tag champs, just about the past few weeks of television. So... I... I see Sasha... No, Sasha... But Shayna and Nia winning the titles back, and then fighting somebody. Probably eventually the, women, the winners of the Women's Dusty Cup. Drew McIntyre versus Goldberg for the WWE title. I'll start off by saying that back in the day, I loved Goldberg. Goldberg was the man. He was wrecking people. It was great. It was awesome. One of the clearest wrestling memories I have is watching Goldberg win the WCW title off of Hollywood Hogan on an episode of Nitro with my grandfather. I remember that moment distinctly. He was a man who was destroying people, yeah, and then he came back and him and Lesnar had a great little series of things back a few years ago. But I was there since he beat Kevin Owens for the Universal title. It's like, okay, I don't need him here anymore. Especially when he beat The Fiend so cleanly, it's just Beyond the fact that The Fiend probably should have had the title anyway, so early on, if at all. Just, they squashed a really good, compelling character, because Goldberg had to be the hero and he couldn't lose. Which, I don't know why that would matter when you're almost never there. I don't know why they would give him that much creative control, or why they put him in the top of the match immediately, but anyway. Drew needs to retain. He really does. You could try to think of some maybe interesting matches for Goldberg to have, and yet it would mean something for someone to beat Goldberg at WrestleMania for the title. Like it was going to be for Reigns, I guess, back at last year's Mania, which feels like so long ago after 2020. But Drew already had his drop it and then pick it back up thing with Orton. And, yeah, there might be some dream matches, but 
I mean, the only dream match there is is probably him and Reigns, maybe the Battle of the Spears, maybe, but there's more interesting things for Reigns to do. There's more interesting things for McIntyre to do. It's long past due. It's been years past due for WWE to be done with their past legends and to move on to the future. And Drew McIntyre has been a fantastic WWE champion. He got thrust into this position of being a champion during what will be looked back upon as a really dark time, not just in the world, but in wrestling in particular, because there was no fans, there was no crowd. So, and he's continued to be a great champion during this time. There's no point to stop it now. He should be carrying that title, or at least be really close to that title once we're back to normal. And if Mania is when we're going to start having at least limited attendance, Drew needs to walk in as champion, and then once weekly television can go back to having at least light crowds, he needs to walk in as the champion again. He is supremely over. He is really, really good. He's vastly entertaining. He looks legit. He's there every week. He has been maybe pretty close to being the perfect champion to have during these dark times when there's no crowds. So I really hope that they're not thinking, oh yeah, well Goldberg will win the title. I ask why. There's only, if I don't know, there's nobody I can think of that I want to fight Goldberg. He fought Lesnar and they had a redo. I mean, just, there's no need for Drew to win. Drew needs to retain. I really hope he does. Next match, I'll have to look it up. I know what the last three are. The next one will be, next matchup is Roman Reigns versus Kevin Owens for the Universal title in a last man standing match. This is going to be a brutal affair. They are going to about damn near kill each other, and Reigns is probably going to retain, but it's probably going to take about killing Kevin Owens to do it. The work between these two has been great. Kevin Owens has just seemed like the perfect guy to just stand up to Reigns and his bullying. As people saw when they were doing their split-screen promo on SmackDown, when Owens said, you're just a theater production of a mob boss and just acting like a big, tough guy, it affected Reigns. Reigns was like, uh, how dare you? And Owens is known for being in some of these kind of brutal matchups. He's known to build what he'll call contraptions of like a bunch of chairs or ladders or whatever and then go flying into it. And Re- Owens has shown he'll take crazy bumps. He got thrown off the top of a cage by Strowman and threw an announce table. He's taken anybody knows how many more crazy bumps. But Reigns is going to retain. There's some really fascinating stories that you could have with Reigns going in as Universal Champion. One even being Kevin Owens coming back and finally winning it. Maybe maybe not. But Reigns is such a great heel to have that him losing needs to probably be a Mania or at least a SummerSlam main event thing where somebody finally topples the Tyrant. They finally topple this mafia boss. And you could go into a lot of interesting ways to do that. So, not only do I think Reigns is going to retain, it's not one where he needs to because it's so fascinating to have him be champion. I've loved this Roman Reigns since he came back. It is just beautiful. That brings me to the Women's Royal Rumble match. There are a couple that maybe could do it. And from what I've seen of people, it seems like it's coming down to... It seems like it's either Bianca Belair, Bailey, and I think some people also said maybe Alexa Bliss, but I feel like Bliss might be a little bit too tied up in whatever The Fiend is doing, which is probably going to be with Randy Orton. So I don't know if Bliss will win it. Bliss might do something interesting where she kind of does her three variations, maybe, or at least change from Firefly Funhouse to, you know, Fiend... I guess possessed. Bliss, which is what we've seen, she might do that. But I don't think she's going to win. And I'm going to say Bianca Belair is going to win because this is, this would be just, it is a star making thing to win. She, I think, tied with Shayna Baszler last year with eight eliminations, which was the most. And she's just 
on a roll. She is somebody that she needs to be holding a title at some point. Back when she first debuted, I think it may have been Corey Graves that said, within a year she'll be a champion, and yeah. Now, this is not going to say whether it's, you know, long reigning, or whether she's going to hold it for three months, lose it, and then gain a couple more times, but at some point, probably at WrestleMania, she probably needs to be winning this. I, I don't know where Bianca Belair might be able to go if she loses the Rumble. Maybe if Bailey does something sneaky enough, but Belair had said in her uh, WWE Chronicle that, yeah, I, I did well last year, but I need to win it next. And it seemed like that's the hot hand. She's doing fantastic work. She got a win over Bailey, who is the longest reigning SmackDown Women's Champion. Just, it, it needs to happen. And there's, there's the Going It Raw podcast. They, I forgot who it was. It may have been, I think it was Steve, that said that it could be a triple threat WrestleMania where Belair wins the Rumble and fights Sasha Banks, and then Bailey finds a way to worm her win in, worm her way into it and make a triple threat match at Mania, which you got Belair, who is definitely coming along, working with two veterans like that, two of the four horsewomen. I mean, it's just, regardless of who she pins, she's going to look even better than she probably already will. So, again, yeah, Belair needs to win the Women's Rumble, and I would say probably needs to win at WrestleMania, or at least it be this thing of, it's clear that Belair could have won, if not for maybe Bailey sneaking in and stealing at the last minute in a triple threat. Because you know it's going to be a great match if Sasha Banks and Bailey are involved. And Belair can only make it better. Even if it's just one on one. But yeah, Belair needs to win the Rumble, simply put. And that brings it to the Men's Royal Rumble. This is one where there's a lot of interesting stories that you can tell. You have Edge who said, all right, well, you know, I need to win this and get back the title I never lost, which that is probably the ultimate, I never lost the title, 10 years in the making. Uh, you could have AJ Styles spoil somebody's dream and take on Drew McIntyre, another great match. You could have, you know, just Kevin Owens somehow is able to pull up from the rubble of Last Man Standing match and win and get a match at WrestleMania, but that might be too much of it. And then there's my pick of Daniel Bryan. Because, as he said, he's never won a Rumble. He's won, I think, everything else. So why not add that gem to his crown? And just lead to what would be a great match by default. Because it's Daniel Bryan, who's definitely one of those, give him a mop and he'll give you a four and a half star match without even trying, probably against Roman Reigns who's doing great character work. And they have history as well, because lest we forget, part of why we just probably didn't like Roman Reigns so much years ago was, yeah, he was being forced down our throats, but also we wanted Daniel Bryan. And Reigns could take that history, maybe twist it a little bit and go, well, if it wasn't for you, I could have gotten what I've deserved for so long. And he could say, look, you represent these people who want to disrespect me. He could just put it on us, and just say, this will be an example to all of you that still don't respect me. And I don't know if Daniel Bryan used to win this or not. If Daniel Bryan... I'll say if Reigns is going to lose the title, this would be a hell of a time to do it. At WrestleMania against Daniel Bryan, it's believable he could do it. But I think he could also have a really nasty twisting of the dagger if Reigns does retain against Daniel Bryan. Because one, it's already heartbreak. It's like, no, we want him to win again. And maybe finally give Daniel Bryan a really good and interesting world title run. Because he had the World Heavyweight Championship back when he cashed in Money in the Bank. And he actually did pretty decently with the WWE title a few years back now that I think about it. But that was as a heel. To let him be able to be a babyface world champion, which he never has done, technically. He did it for a short while at Germania 30, but then he had to lead to an injury. That could be fun, but then also, that, think about how heartbreaking that is. What Daniel Bryan to win? He's finally won the Rumble, and then Reigns destroys him. And it doesn't have to be outright a career versus title match. It doesn't even have to be, you know, Reigns saying, well, if you lose, I banish you from my show, I banish you from SmackDown. 
it could just be unofficially a career match, kind of, where it's Roman Reigns destroys Daniel Bryan to the point, either at Mania or the SmackDown afterwards, where Daniel Bryan just can never be full-time again. It doesn't have to be official. It could just be just in storyline of, well, Reigns destroyed Daniel Bryan that badly, where it could be a thing of just, you know, lost his steps. Like, well, no, in this case, Reigns beat a step out of him. And again, that would just be heart-wrenching. So I think Daniel Bryan's probably going to win the Rumble, or it'd be best if he did. Now, if you look at who's listed, there's still a lot of empty slots. I can't think of anyone that could come back, and it would make sense for them to challenge one of the current champions for, assuming that Reigns and McIntyre leave Royal Rumble and don't lose their title between now and Mania. I know people talk about Seth Rollins, Becky Lynch. Well, I don't want Becky Lynch to enjoy being a mom, so. Maybe she can come back, but also I think, like, I don't know who she could challenge and it'd be interesting. I guess maybe she could challenge Asuka and say, thank you for holding the title, but I'm ready to take it back now. Although that'd be kind of a weird thing from when she handed the title over to Asuka if she won money in the bank. That would be a bit of a 180. And I don't see her fighting, I don't see her fighting uh, Sasha Banks either. That doesn't feel like it would work. Seth Rollins, I guess, could challenge Drew McIntyre, but that's what I thought. I don't know who Drew's going to fight at Mania necessarily. Maybe Seth will come back and win. Maybe. But for now, I'm going with Daniel Bryan, because I know he's in the Rumble. And Seth might have business with, like, Buddy Murphy, maybe, wherever he's gone. I can't think of anybody else. Uh, you can try to go through the people that are on NXT. Maybe you can have a thing of one of them wins and then challenges either Balor or Io Shirai or whoever's the champion by the time Mania comes around at some point, maybe. Again, maybe Rhea Ripley can win the Women's Rumble and do something, but... I, so, first, I like the Rumbles this year because it's, it is not super easy to predict who's going to win. Because there are so many interesting ways they could go. I know, I know Vince will do with what Vince does. He probably has this really weird idea. And then there's a rumor that some source said, well, you know, they're heavily considering something that I think, like, quote, scares the death out of me. Whatever that is, I don't know. I don't know if that's like Goldberg wins the Rumble after entering at some really high number and then challenges Reigns, which to me wouldn't be a very interesting match necessarily. You know, Spear versus Spear, but Reigns isn't the right character for that dream match now. But that's what I think about the Rumble. Or this has been advertised because there's also a possibility of Bobby Lashley and Riddle fighting for the U.S. title, which uh, Riddle could win. All the matches could play on the pre-show. Riddle might win, but then again, Lashley's been pretty dominant. That feels like another one where you want to build somebody up. Which I don't know who that would be. Riddle is the best chance right now. I gotta have to think about that. But hey, if it's like if Riddle and Lashley fight for the US title, probably the pre show. And I don't know, Lashley retains. But there's that chance that Riddle might win too. Who knows? But Lashley retains. That's my thoughts on it. Um, let's enjoy the show. And like and comment and subscribe and social media, YouTube stuff, and all that. And I'll see you in my next video.